All right, what is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast, weekly real estate tip where every single week I come to you delivering different information, tactics, tips, and strategies that I've learned in my 20 year long real estate career that have allowed me to go out there and sell over 7,000 homes and become one of the top realtors and team leaders on the planet, as well as after coaching 5,000 realtors, team leaders, and broker owners, sharing these strategies, again, tips, information, knowledge with you. So with hopes that you can take this and go out there and crush it within your own real estate goals and build the life and the business that you truly want to go out there and build. All right, so today I'm here to talk to you about a really important topic, something that so many are struggling with. Many more struggle with this than that don't struggle with this. And this has been something that I've had to learn and had to, have had to overcome to and figure out as well, which is why are we not taking the necessary actions that we need to take inside of our real estate business or lives. This applies to all aspects of life. These things I'm going to be sharing with you today will help you go out there and create success in any aspect of your life that you want to create success. And, but this channel is dedicated to, or this podcast is dedicated to building our real estate businesses. So I'm going to keep it more specific about our real estate business, you know, but why aren't we taking the actions that we like, we know what to do. We know how to do it. We know why to do it. Why are we still not taking those necessary actions? And look, this is something, as I just mentioned a moment ago, that a few years ago and different points in my career, but a few years ago, I got hit the hardest with this. Like it got to the point where like just opening up my email and responding and replying to emails and not even responding, replying, just checking my email became like the most painful task, which sounds so stupid, sounds so, so silly, but maybe you can relate to that where, okay, man, it's just hard for me to go out there and find the motivation to find the drive, to just get myself to just do basic necessary actions inside my business, no matter how small or how big, if you ever find yourself struggling with those things, that's what this podcast topic here today is going to help you break down on a deep front. Now, all of this at the end of the day boils down to dopamine. And I'm going to do a deep dive into dopamine, what it is, how it works, and then how to, with this knowledge, how to go out there and structure your environment, structure your life, certain tactical things that you can do that are going to help you go out there and make it just a hell of a lot easier to go out there and execute on these different tasks that you need to go out there and execute to create the life that you know that you truly want in the business that you know will create that life that you truly want to go out there and create. Now, I'm not here sitting there saying that these you know, things I'm going to cover with you are, are, are going to allow everything in your business to be more fun. No, I mean, I still have to do things that aren't necessarily fun, you know, but I don't dread doing them. I'm just kind of neutral. It's just like, hey, here's the task I got to get done. Now, there's fun things. I think there's part of all of our businesses where there are fun things that we really enjoy doing. But then probably more than the fun things, there's things that aren't so fun that maybe we dread of, of going out there and doing. At least I know that that is the case for me. Like I love doing these podcasts. I love doing webinars. I love doing coaching sessions. I love doing, you know, uh, speaking engagements. I love, but man, like jumping, like sitting behind my computer for, you know, which is like 80% of my day, building out funnels, building out email campaigns. And, and look, there was a time where maybe it was new and I was just learning it. And it was, you know, an element of novelty where it was kind of exciting. But then when that novelty wears off, okay, then now it's like, oh man, this just becomes another boring, mundane thing that I dread. Um, but if we are not careful, it's easier today than ever before. And this is why so many human beings struggle with this is because everything is rigged against us. And this is really going to, I'm going to really cover a lot about technology today and, you know, how these different technology platforms um, are making it more and more difficult. This is where we're seeing more and more people suffering from depression and lack of motivation and, and all of these things. Now, I'm not pretending to be a depression expert, even though I've, you know, figured out how to be an expert in my own life at solving my own elements of depression that I experience, but I'm not pretending to be, you know, a psychiatrist here or like that. I know how to go through and solve anybody's depression. What I am here to talk about though, is how do we get you? How do we get us to go out there and take those daily actions that maybe, you know, just like that email example I gave earlier, you know, where I was just like, man, I would just dread it and dread it and dread it and think about it. And then I get in front of it where now again, now is it exciting for me? No. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, I just look forward to it every day. Now I'm just neutral. It's just kind of like breathing. I'm not excited to breathe. It's something I got to do, but it's it's like I'm just neutral to it, man. I just So it gets you into taking those actions. Now, before I get into explaining dopamine specifically and then breaking down some of these steps, there are four things 
overall that are extremely important where these are going to go hand in hand. Now, these first four things you've heard me talk a lot about on this podcast. So this first four things might be a refresher. If this is the first time that you've listened here, maybe this will be new to you. But these things are imperative to going out there and changing our behavior. Because that's what we're looking to do here. So we've got to elicit a behavior change because your current behavior, your current actions, your current operation style um, is getting you the result that you're currently getting and leading you to not taking the necessary actions that you need to be taking or want to be able to be taking inside your business to get you to that next level and those different results that you're after. Okay, so the first thing is, number one, is you must have a goal plus a purpose. So we got to have a goal. So the goal is the target. This is the thing that we're going after achieving. The purpose is the reason as to why that target, why that goal is important for us to go out there and achieve. So this is why you hear me talk a lot about in this podcast of clarity. And clarity really has a few different steps, right? Get extreme clarity on what you want, why you want it, why it's important to you. The reason why I break down those different things instead of just saying, oh, you got to get clarity on what you want, right? That's not enough. We got to go layers deeper because that allows us to get, you know, what we want is the goal. But then the why we want it, why it's important to us, boom, that becomes the purpose for the goal. Now, I know and understand, you know, a purpose can screw up a lot of people, including myself. Um, um, me, what I mean by that is, okay, a lot of people, you know, some people I see about like 50, 50, you know, kind of split down the middle or some people it's like easy to go out there and find that clarity. And they're like, boom, this just, you know, um, pulls them in a different direction. And, 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 you know, it's easy for them to go out there and get that clarity. The other, you know, the other 50%, I find a lot of people have struggled with this. And then they start to self-sabotage and get down on themselves because they're unable to find clarity on their overall quote unquote purpose. But a lot of people are thinking about life's purpose, like, oh, I got to have this big monumental life purpose. Look, if you have one, great. I'm not talking about creating a life purpose. You know, um, for me, man, I've got lots of different goals. I got lots of different purposes for those goals. I do not necessarily have one monumental life purpose. I'm not try, you know, like Elon Musk, where it's like, okay, my purpose is to go out there and solve interstellar space travel. Because I believe it's what's necessary to go out there and, and, you know, save the human species. Like, that's freaking dope. That's epic. Amazing for Elon Musk. But for me, like, dude, I don't have, you know, it's like, I just, I'm just trying to live a good life and enjoy life and be fulfilled and, you know, not be depressed and, you know, whatever. And, and so I have lots of different things. You know, I have lots of different goals and purposes for those goals and a lot of different aspects of my life. You know, um, but for each specific goal that you set, and then we'll talk about, okay, well, how do we get ourselves taking actions that we need to take that are necessary to take to make those goals a reality. But the first step is you got to have that purpose aligned with that goal. And the reason why this is so important is look, you're going to have a lot of different reasons as to why to not take action on that said goal. But usually there's only you know, one, two, three reasons as to why we need to push through that, that boring, mundane, hard work that we got to do um, to go out there and make that goal a reality. So when you are extremely clear on what the goal is and what the purpose is for the goal, right, um, that's just going to massively, exponentially increase your probability for taking these right actions. And now we can remind ourselves of this. You know, I recommend to, you know, do vision boards, write out your goals. I, mean, I write out my goals every, write out and review my goals every morning when I wake up write them out before I go to bed in my you know reflection and planning exercise that I go through. Um, but even when you look at, you know, from a psychiatrist standpoint, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time and I continue to spend a lot of time studying human behavior, studying psychology, studying psychiatry. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm a college dropout, but I'm learning from them because these are just masters of the mind um, and people that figure out how to go out there and elicit different behavior change. Well, I know for me, man, if I want a different result, I've got to elicit different behavior change. So I'm learning and just learning as much as I possibly can. You know, I spend a hell of a lot of time, more time studying this kind of stuff than I actually do sales stuff. And I find it to impact my overall life and business on a much higher level. But when you talk to, you know, let's just say psychiatrists that have a lot of experience with helping people break addiction, um, whether that be video game addiction, whether that be alcohol, whether it be on um, porn or whatever that may be, um, the, the, the number one thing that allows their patients to have success, at least from the psychiatrists and psychologists that I've had conversations with that I've learned from, um, is their patients having a purpose as to why they want to break that addiction. Like you got to want, you got to want it. You got to want to want to, like, you got to, you got to want to change. You got to want this stuff, but in order to want something, you got to be clear on what your reasoning is to go out there and achieve that. Now, another thing that's really important here is you want to make sure that your goals are 100% your own. It is so easy, especially in this era that we are in, 
where every time you go on Instagram, every time you go on TikTok, every time, you know, everybody else is telling us what success should be. Oh, this is what it means to be a man. This is what it means to be a woman. This is what it means to, you know, whatever. And we got, you know, um, all this bullshit, you know, just in, in, and I'm not saying that social media is bullshit or anything like that. I'm just saying that we got so much coming at us and we are now in an area where people are, you know, just telling us how to think in, in, in whatever, where we've got to be more cognizant of this probably than any other time in human history, right? So it's so easy right now to be influenced by external circumstances and external circumstances or external goals that are not your own, because if they're not truly important to you and if they don't truly matter to you personally as a human being, it's very, very difficult to go out there and acquire those goals and make those a reality. And then when you do, they're not going to fulfill you. You're going to feel the same way. You're not going to be happy. You know, I've learned this the hard way, you know? Um, so with that though, I mean, I was chasing the cars, chasing the income, chasing, you know, and, and, and not that those are bad things, but they're not things that are important to me. I just don't give a fuck about cars. So then I start buying the cars. And I'm like, well, shit, this doesn't feel good. I still feel fucking just as shitty as I did before I got this car. Maybe it felt good for like um, the first month you know, or a couple of days or, you know, whatever, or, you know, went out there and I started buying, you know, getting these like, you know, I don't know, Rolexes and always, and then I'm like, fuck dude, like, I don't even like this thing. Like I got this, you know, $800 freaking Garmin that I like better than my $10,000 watches, you know, or $10,000 Rolex or whatever, you know, but I, I was chasing goals that weren't my own, that were external things that weren't important to me. Not saying that those, those things might drive you. Cool. They're important to you. If you're a car person and you love freaking cars and that drives you fine. The key here is make sure your goals are 100% your own. They are not influenced from external circumstances. And then the last thing that I'll say here is the more that you can set internal targets versus external targets, the, the higher the probability you're going to accomplish your goals, right? Be able to push through the things to accomplish your goals. You know, um, so what do I mean by that? There's nothing wrong with, you know, wanting the big house and whatever. That's stuff that really drives you, you know, um, but then it's like, okay, we hit this external thing. Well, then what next? And then what next? And then what next? When you have these goals that are internal. So like an example, instead of me, goals that have screwed me up before was like, oh, dude, I just want to be making a million a year. Well, then I drove, you know, worked my ass off to go out there and get that. And then when I started making a million a year, man, I was more kind of unhappy or at least equally as unhappy as I was when I was freaking broke, you know? Um, so then, but then as I started setting targets internal versus you know, external versus societal and whatever, like meaning that like, okay, um, I want to go out there and grow and expand into the best version of myself. I want to go out there. And when I, when I'm, when I'm looking in the mirror, that person looking back at me and not just from an aesthetic standpoint, where I'm looking eye to eye, like deep into my own soul, I want to be proud of who that person is. You know, um, when you're starting to set those internal goals, that aren't necessarily external reward, but internal reward that are truly powerful and truly important to you. Again, the higher probability is at least if I've just learned this, you know, for my own self. Plus, again, those that treat a lot of patients going through this kind of stuff um, that I've had conversations with, you know, have, have, have found this to be true as well. Okay. So then number two, now that we've set the goal, we got the purpose for the goal. Number two is to identify the best proven plan that you can come up with to identify to get you from where you're at to where it is that you want to go. Right. So then now we have clarity on what we need to execute on, what we need to do to go out there and get from point A to point B. Right. Um, and then the cool thing is this plan is a plan that's allowing us to get from where we're at to where we want. And that's the key thing, what we want, what you want to be. So identify what is the best proven plan for whatever that thing is. Like I got a different proven plan for my overall health and fitness journey. I have a different proven plan for my real estate business. Maybe I have a different proven plan for other things that are important to me in my area, but uh, in my life. But here's the thing is when we are, it's hard enough just to show up and do the work each and every single day consistently. So then on top of that, if we've got to go out there and reinvent the wheel and figure out the plan, um, then from there, that's where a lot of times burnout comes into play. Because let's just say you got these 20 different roads ahead of you and you end up spit, but like, dude, like you you know what you want, you know why you want it. Like you're ready to rock and roll, you're committed, you're committed to taking those actions, right? Well, what is burnout? Burnout is I mean, if we look at just the overall definition of it and what it truly is, a lot of people use the word burnout, but like, what is burnout really? Burnout is, you know, taking action, but not receiving any of the expected reward. And after a long enough period of time, so when you're taking action, 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 you're showing up, showing up, showing up, but you just keep getting kicked in the teeth, keep getting kicked in the teeth, you're, you're setback after setback after setback, and you're seeing no growth, no expansion, no, no reward, you're getting no reward mechanism back to you. Um, well, then that turns into burnout. 
So then what happens is even though like you got clarity in what you want, and you're ready to rock and roll and you're willing to go out there and do the actions and to do all the other things that we're talking about, eventually these things can go out there and wane and then we can get burnt out. Then let's just say you go down these 20 roads and then boom, on the 21st road, you finally discover the right road. But then from there, you're too, you're too exhausted. You're too burnt out. Too much time has passed. You know, right? Like just go, I'm just telling you right now, you'll save yourself insane amounts of time, suffering and pain. If you just take the time to do the research, do the due diligence and go out there and find the right way to go out there and get from where you want to where you want to go. And it's easy to go out there and do it. Just, just think of this, like just going and getting the instructions. Like, yeah, I could go out there and try to I don't build something or put, you know, this piece of furniture from Ikea that I get together. Um, but it'd be a hell of a lot easier, a hell of a lot better, a hell of a lot quicker if I just went out there and followed the instructions to a T, right? Um, okay, so then number three um, is to make sure that you have your tracking system in place. Now that we got this plan, right? Okay, what are we going to have to track the, our execution of the plan to get to where we want? And the reason why tracking is so important, and I know I talked about this a lot in this podcast, yeah, it allows us to create predictability, allows us to know where, where, you know, where we need to improve upon inside of our business. Tracking becomes the most important system um, uh, inside our overall business or anything when we're trying to accomplish anything, you know, is track to track and measure it. But then from there, on a flip side, something that I don't really talk about a lot here on the podcast is the dopamine reward system, right? So dopamine is the only molecule more. I'm going to get into that more here in a moment. Um, but then when we are tracking our progress, when we're tracking our activities, we're tracking the progress and we're seeing those results that then inserts and creates a, a increased dopamine, you know, uh, response to that thing. And then that gets us more motivated to continue taking more and more action on that overall thing. That's how dopamine works with a dopamine reward system. Okay. So then number four um, is rigging your environment for overall success, right? Making it as easy as possible to win, difficult as possible to lose, right? Environment is going to be include your physical environment as well as the people around you, you know, to, to, to go out there and create the success that you want to create. Now, part of environment, I guess we could look at that is leading into you know, um, dopamine and the things that I'm going to share with you here next on this. And, and this could be a separate topic too, you know, outside of that, but I'm just kind of, you know, chunking it in here because it's really important. Because if we look at rigging our environment, well, what are things that we can do through systems, you know, through our physical environment, you know, through, you know, people to go out there and again, make it as easy as possible to win, difficult as possible to go out there and lose. So how do we make it as easy as possible to go out there and do those actions inside of our business that we have to do that maybe typically we freaking dread and then we just procrastinate and then we just avoid and then we're not taking action on the thing. Like we got the plan. We know what the plan is that we need to execute on. We know why we want to, why, what's important to us, you know, whatnot, but then we're still not taking action. Well, why not? Right. So then from there, that's where it comes into understanding dopamine. And then again, I'm going to give you some very, you know, kind of tactical things that you can start doing that I do. And I've done in my life that make a world of difference on this stuff. It gets me to just go out there and execute like a machine. And again, where I'm just neutral to it. I don't have a positive feeling or a negative feeling. Like it's just, hey, it's just work that needs to get done. I just get it done, you know, um, um, regardless. So, you know, I don't I don't have that emotional state. Yeah, right. And, and what is commitment? Doing the necessary actions, regardless of your emotional state. And success only reserved for those that are committed. So how do we get ourselves where we don't have that negative emotion and that dread to taking these activities? So, okay, what is dopamine? So dopamine is a neurotransmitter, uh, you know, just emitted in the body, you know, um, but the difference of dopamine is that dopamine is what's classified as the molecule of more. It's really the only thing in the body that creates motivation, that desire to go out there and move forward in, inside of life and inside of our businesses, right? So they've done these researches on like rats where they just shut off their dopamine receptors and then the rats won't even get get up and move. They'll, they'll put the food a rat length away from the body of the rat. So when they shoot up the dopamine receptors, even though the rat's hungry, the rat actually won't even move forward to the food and they'll just stay put and allow themselves to starve. So this is what dopamine is, is dopamine isn't what makes you hungry or, or creates that drive per se. It's what gets you to move forward at taking the actions that you need to do to go out there and get that desired result. So, so, you know, dopamine is a very, very powerful thing. And most people allow dopamine to go out there and control their lives, right? Um, in through different ways and negative ways. So when it comes to dopamine, you know, just think of this as your body's got like a baseline of dopamine that it secretes. Well, anything that we go, and there's a lot of different things that we can go out there, do that, like that increase the kind of dopamine surge, you know, right. That we experience, so when you look at this, okay, food can increase it, sex can increase it, but then, okay, um, social media, gambling, 
very specific drugs, you know, cocaine or like Adderall. For any of you that have ever had experience with Adderall, you know, um, 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 you know, just has these big, huge surges in this dopamine level or dopamine spikes. Now, the biggest surges are usually going to be these kind of outside artificial spikes. So that's going to be things like, you know, gambling, social media, maybe video gaming. Um, um, so let's just say, okay, you got this baseline. Let's just say your baseline is zero, right? Um, and not that it's zero, but let's just use that as an example here. So your baseline is zero. So you go out there and, you know, I don't know, do, do a line of cocaine, you take an Adderall, you do something that's just that crazy artificial, you know, uh, uh, spike of dopamine that might spike your levels by a thousand percent. Well, when you look at dopamine, like you only have so much to go out there and exhaust in a given day's period of time. So then I've heard this like, okay, thinking of like a lemon, well, if you squeeze the hell out of it, okay, well, you don't have a lot of juice left. But if you just kind of squeeze it slowly or squeeze it softly, well, then you can kind of sustain that juice throughout the day. Now, here's the thing with dopamine though, is it doesn't just spike up a thousand percent when you do these crazy things like that um, and then come back down to baseline. No, it will go down in a negative an equal percentage is it went up, right? So, okay, we spike, you know, spike at that thousand percent. Well, then now it's going to go a thousand. Once it's done, that high wears off, it goes a thousand percent below baseline, right? And this is why, you know, I remember I experimented with Adderall, um, not saying to go do it, right? I won't touch the stuff. Uh, uh, and, and if you have a need for it, not saying anything's against it, you know, um, I don't, I've never been clinically diagnosed with, with ADD. It was just something that I wanted to go out there and test, you know, this, I mean, people told me you had ADD, you know, whatever, but I was like, I just want to go out there and test to see what it does for the mind. I've heard good things about it. So I went out there and tested it, but then seeing like the boom, like, holy crap, man. Like it was like, if there was a limitless pill, I was like, dude, this is it. Like talk about the get shit done, you know, drug. But then the second it wore off, man, I felt like shit, you know? And then from there it was like, okay, that equal high, then that equal feeling like absolute shit. And then it took, you know, some time for me to reset and get back to that baseline. So things like, um, um, okay, social media has about the same spike when they measure dopamine levels as gambling, which might spike it, you know, let's just call it 500%. You know, um, so then think about that. You squeeze in like half of the freaking dopamine reserves that you have, you know, by jumping on there. So you have, but then not only does it go back, you know, go up 500%, doesn't just go back to baseline, it goes below baseline. Here's the problem too. When you're using these artificial, you know, kind of dopamine, you know, surge responses, you know, things, you know, out there, the baseline, the one can you just spike it and spike it and spike it and spike it. The baseline through going through that process, right? It ends up lowering and they can take forever to freaking reset. So it's that understanding of what dopamine is and how it surges and how it goes out there and works, you know, um, because then from there, when we understand this and we're able to start eliminating these artificial dopamine kind of surge activities, and I'm not saying I'd eliminate them altogether. I mean, hopefully you're not doing lines of cocaine and, you know, uh, uh, not taking, you know, Adderall or that kind of stuff, unless it's, you know, prescribed for a specific reason and you truly have ADD and I'm not trying to play doctor here. I'm not a doctor. I'm a college dropout. Um, just a dude that just, you know, figure out some of these things to keep my mind, you know, um, on focus on task, um, and get through that hard shit throughout my day that I need to get through every single day, um, uh, without procrastinating on these different things. So I want to remove all of these artificial things as much as I possibly can. So then I can, you know, reset my dopamine levels, but then also keep those surges lower. Right. So, you know, like, okay, like when you look at food as an example, all these highly processed, highly palatable foods are going to spike that more than, you know, maybe just a piece of fruit. Right. Um, and it's been really interesting and I'll give an example here, um, how, how this has allowed me to enjoy food more, just like these activities in my real estate business. Um, and I've been allowed to enjoy food really for the first time, I, first time in decades and decades, and since, you know, since I was morbidly obese and that was kind of the only comfort that I had. But then, you know, I was going through my process of like losing a hundred pounds. I got my mind trained of like, dude, food is just, you know, energy and, and just kind of block my relationship with food. And I just start, you know, whatever, but I was still eating processed foods. I was still eating, you know, right. I wasn't, you know, didn't have a full on elimination diet. Wasn't super strict with this stuff. Um, well then about four months ago, I started eating extremely clean. And when I say extremely clean, it's like, okay, I have the diet in place. You know, I track my macros every single day, eat the same foods, pretty much every single meal all throughout the day, seven days a week, you know, um, but then clean foods, you know, whole, like one ingredient foods, you know, like chicken, rice, cherries, raspberries, blackberry, you know, right? Like whole foods. And what's been really interesting is as I'm going through this, 
it, it, it's 100% changed my relationship with food now in that for the first time in the longest time that I can even remember. Like I absolutely love the taste of food, even though like everybody would probably look at my diet and be like, oh man, that's such a bland diet. Like, dude, Josh, you don't have any, you know, artificial sweet, you know, or, or, or you're not eating, you know, whatever, ice cream or Twinkies or you also have the bullshit, you know, no desserts, no sweets, none of that. No, like the only sweets I put in my body are like fruits, you know, right. But just natural fruits, you know, um, um, when it comes to that, but it's like, okay, like every time I taste a cherry or a strawberry, like it's like the juice is man. So I can feel it hitting my taste buds. My favorite meal of the day, um, is my post-workout meal. So second meal of the day, um, which is 260 grams of a sweet potato, seven whole eggs. Do the eggs like over easy? So I got the you know the kind of runny um, uh, yolk on there, and then you know I dice up the sweet potato, cook it in a pan with some avocado oil, mix it all together, and dude, it's like every bite is just like heaven in my mouth. It's like fireworks going off in my mouth. You know, my family makes some fun of me because I'm like just like I'm like oh my god, right? Like it's so damn good, you know. But it took me eliminating all the other bullshit. Yeah. Right. So then now that's allowed me to enjoy that thing. Yeah. Right. Um, or enjoy those things. Now, again, I'm not saying that you're going to enjoy all of these things, but this is an example of, of on a, in a kind of a different way of, of how this stuff can work. So when we remove and eliminate, you know, as many of the ar artificial dopamine kind of, you know, spikes, if you will, that's not how it really works, but if you just think of these, okay, I, I do this thing, boom, big dopamine spike do this thing, big dopamine spike. Because the reason as to why most people are having issues executing on these things, the reason I, I was procrastinating on emails, the reason why I was procrastinating on anything, because I was having all these crazy high artificial dopamine spikes, you know, way before I started even doing those activities. So by the time I got to those activities, my dopamine reserves were freaking shot and gone and, and, and not even back to baseline, but below baseline. So when I got to those things, it made it harder and harder and harder. Right, because the dopamine is the molecule more which pushes us to move forward. Well, we need to be able to push forward and do more of the things that might be boring, mundane, tedious, you know, and so forth. So we want to eliminate the artificial spikes because then you'll just have nothing in the tank left, and it's just going to make it much harder to go out there and execute on this shit. Um, um, but then from there, let's get so you know as much as you possibly can eliminate you know, any of the artificial spikes. Now I get and understand, okay, like I still got to jump on social media. I do a lot of business on social media, but I can minimize this, but then I can structure my day in a certain way where I do it at certain times that make these activities easier. So, okay. So some things that I've done that are game changers, right? So now I know not everybody can do this first thing. So I'll go into an alternative that you can do if you can't do this first thing. But my recommendation is, and I learned this from a psychiatrist, that for the first four hours of your day, so when you wake up for the first four hours of your day, zero technology. So not checking your phone, not checking emails, not checking social media, not listening to music, not watching TV, zero technology for the first four hours of your day. So that's very easy for a guy like me that gets up early. Cause then I got, I get up at 4 a.m. Now, uh, you know, I had to reset my schedule. You know, if you listen to the podcast for the different seasons of my life, where I was getting up at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Now today it's 4 a.m. With my new training schedule, I had to sleep in an extra hour to be able to handle all the shit that I'm doing right now. Um, but okay, so I'm getting up at 4 a.m. So I can easily go to 8 a.m. When I say easy, I'm not saying it's not easy. Took some, you know, took like some force in pushing through, learning to push through boredom of not checking those tech, you know, technology devices. But okay, I can go those first four hours and then, because usually I'm starting my work day at 8 a.m. anyways. So, okay, emails can wait till 8 a.m. Like people can wait till 8 a.m. The world can wait till 8 a.m. before we plug into the, you know, the freaking quote unquote world through all this tech, right? Um, um, now, if you can't do that. So, when I wake up 4 a.m., I'm going 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. without checking my phone, without checking emails, without logging on the computer, without listening to music, any of these things. So, then when I work out, so I get up at, at 4 a.m., have my first meal. Um, then at 5 a.m., 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. every single morning, six days a week, I'm working out, resistance training, working out with weights, right? Um, but even during my workout, no earbuds, no, no music, no podcasts, no ebooks, none of that, like no technology at all, boom, nothing, right? So then I get done working out, eat real quick, shower, whatever, then boom, start my workday at 8 a.m., but then now when I start my work day, okay, now I'm going to start with those work activities that I'm doing. Now, before I get into starting a work day and work activities, if you can't do four hours in the morning, that's okay. Don't stress out about that. Start with, okay, not checking tech for the first hour that you are awake. 
not allowing yourself to check any tech that you have to go out there and do. Um, then from there, okay, then we want to start a work day. So we're minimizing or eliminating tech for that first hour. If not, if you can do four hours, awesome. But if you're not, you're okay for that first hour. Then from there, when it comes to, you know, high, you know, surging dopamine, you know, activities, okay, like I'm going to minimize all of those that I possibly can until my core work is done, right? Until my either work day is done. So like total work day might be, okay, before I allow myself to watch any YouTube videos, before I somehow listen to any podcasts, before I somehow watch my, allow myself to go out and watch TV or movies, you know, or, or, you know, if you're video game to be a you know game or, or whatever, okay, I'm going to make sure that all those things are done. If I can't eliminate those things altogether, I'm going to do those things only once all of my work is done and complete for the day. Right. Um, but then from there, Okay, I understand that you and I, we got to check emails, we got to post things on social media, but I don't need to use social media in kind of the dopamine spiking ways, the way from entertainment, the way for, you know, the other kind of highs that people, you know, get off of those things. All right, so then from there, so, okay, I'm just looking through my checklist here. So, you know, when you're working out, you know, none of that stuff, no TV entertainment until your work is done. Um, then from there, another thing that's really important with this is, and this is going to be very difficult initially. But the more boredom that you can allow yourself to go out there and experience. And I had to learn this when I had to kind of break the addiction that I had to my phone. Um, I went to the extreme, I'm not saying to go out there and do this and recommend this. I'm in a position with business and life where I could do it and it didn't hurt my business. But I got rid of my smartphone for six months, went back to an old school flip phone. They call it a dumb phone nowadays, but your old school flip phone. Yeah, right. So I could just force myself to break any addictions that I had to that piece of technology. Now, if I was still, let's just say an individual agent, I didn't have my team and all my staff and whatever. Okay. That would have hurt my business. So I'm not saying to do this, those extremes, if that's going to go out there and hurt you. Um, but you know, we've got these big addictions to our phones. We've got, you know, um, and then from there, a lot of people sit there and say, Oh man, I go on to social media to relax. I do these certain things to go out there and relax. Um, I used to say the same thing with alcohol. Oh, it just quiets my mind. It shuts down my mind. No, that's an external coping mechanism. You're know, right. Um, um, that isn't actually calming down my mind or quieting my mind. It's just an escape. It's, it's a negative element of escape. So it's just a cop out, right? So same thing when people are like, oh, I just go on social media to quiet my mind. You're know, right. No, we want to be able to quiet your mind in just natural ways. Right. So then from there, I also recommend if you're able to, and this is just a good way to start flexing these muscles, you know, these mental muscles, if you will, um, is to walk a day every day, you know, right? Like if you can go on a 20 minute walk, 30 minute walk, if you can go on an hour walk, that's phenomenal. Um, whether it's inside, outside, I don't care. But again, no music, no, none of that. Like just allow your thought, like just to be with your own thoughts, focus internally, you know, because we get all this external stimuli and with technology and just, and we don't necessarily know all the negative repercussions of all of this technology, but we know it's not good. So it's just all this external, external, external stimuli. Um, well, we need, we need to you know, be with our own internal thoughts when it comes to this. But walking, even if you can only do 20 minutes, 30 minutes, cool. Whether it's inside, outside, there's... Dude, you don't get it, man. I'm in my area and it's negative 30 in the winters. Okay, cool. Like, dude, a lot of my walking is around my kitchen island right? Like up and down the hallways. Yeah. You know, I walk all the time in my office, you know, up and down and just walk around the hallways up and down, you know, right. Um, um, so a lot, lot of different environments that you can walk in, but again, no phone, right. Just nothing around you. Um, just being with your own internal thoughts that also help you sleep better at night. And that maybe that's a podcast for another time. Um, but just getting used to being bored. When you're working, unless it's necessary, um, you know, put your phone in your put your phone in a drawer, get it away from you. Do as much work as you possibly can from your computer versus your phone, trying to break that phone addiction. But here, here's the kicker that I want you to take away. So here's some kind of tactical things that you can start doing that are going to, it's gonna sound weird, but the more bored that you can allow yourself to get in life, you know, um, you'll start to find joy in those things, right? You'll start to find that time slows down, you have more time. Um, um, but immediately, initially removing all that external stimuli um, is very difficult, right? But then you'll start finding yourself, you're enjoying overall life more. You have better connections. You have better relationships. You don't, you're not, you know, self-acquiring ADD at the same level. You can focus better, but it's going to allow you to enjoy 
activities that maybe you used to enjoy, but now you don't find enjoyment. It's going to allow you to go out there and enjoy those and maybe not even enjoy, but do those actions. Just like I talked about earlier, you know, with the email, I mean, as silly as it sounds. And again, I, I don't know if others have struggled with this, you know, the extent I had, but like literally dude, I was getting freaking anxiety from just, fuck, I gotta go check my damn emails and, you know, uh, go out there and respond to these emails. And I just procrastinate and dread it. Like it was freaking cold call sales calls or whatever, you know? Um, and then, um, but I started doing these exercises and going through this. And, and the more that I started, you know, cause I had a problem, what's the solution to my problem? I had to go do a bunch of due diligence and research and start testing different things to solve my own problems. But the more bored I allowed myself to get, and now again, so it's like, okay, like, dude, I don't really watch TV ever. I don't watch movies ever, you know? Right. Um, it's like, okay, like you know, last night is an example you know, um, got done, you know, with work and my, my day or whatever, but then got with my wife, my kids, we played Skippo and yeah. Right. But not checking phone, you know, whatever. It's like, I'm enjoying those activities. If you would have asked me three years ago, oh, you want to sit down and play a board game? You know, got to the point where it's harder to read books. It was harder to just go out there and do shit that I used to enjoy, but now no longer I enjoy because I had too much of this external stimuli. Um, but it was allowing, you know, just it, it, this thing's get negative impact relationships, but 100% will and can negatively impact your ability to get the actions done that you need to get done and work. Right. So then when, okay, like if I go out there and I start searching social media, binging podcasts, and you do that for two, three hours before you get into work and then you get into work and then you go out there and try to do these activities, it makes it very difficult. And even for, you know, the host of the, you know, and the founder of the get shit done podcast, right? Like, dude, you know, even though I'm all about getting shit done and, and driving and, and production and productivity, man, I found it massively impacting me. You know, when I'd still do those things, I still would get the work done, but dread it. And, but then that, when you have to operate off of force, when you have to operate off extreme willpower, that's draining as fuck in its own ways. Yeah. You know, right. So instead it's just like, okay, these things will just allow you. So when I don't have that, you know, tech, when I've got that quiet morning with my own thoughts, solitude time, whatever, you know, not artificially, you know, so I got plenty of dopamine left in to squeeze. Once I start doing work related activities, then boom, I just have neutral, you know, it's not good. It's not bad. I don't enjoy it. I don't hate it. It's just like I said earlier, it's just like breathing. Just another thing, you know, just like anything else in life that we got to go out there and do that. We probably don't, you know, it's just automatic that we don't think about, but we just do it. Yeah, you know, right. Saying that that's how these things will become for you, at least in my experience and those that I've had, you know, good friends of mine and teammates and so forth that I've had, you know, do these things that were you know, going through these struggles as well, just like they experienced. So anyway, I know that this is kind of a different style topic than we talk a lot about here on the podcast, but I thought it would be helpful just because I know that so many out there struggling with this right now. I, I have so many people reaching out, man, I just can't find any motivation. And a lot of people are like, well, well since COVID, you know, uh, since COVID hit, man, I'm just finding myself not having the same motivation, the same drive, the same, well, what happened during COVID? We had all the lockdowns. We got more reliant, more addicted to our phones, more addicted to our technologies, more, you know, and there could be some other things there much. Again, I'm not a doctor. There could be other medical things that, you know, whatever, but I'm just, you know, just from observation, like it would make sense. I've heard people say like, oh man, there's just something in the water that happened during COVID and people just seem to lose motivation. Well, again, yeah, we go through this thing where we're lockdown mode and, and can't see friends, whatever. Just people got that much more addicted to, you know, uh, uh, external stimuli through technology. And the shit isn't slowing down. You got these, you know, billion, you know, tr over trillion dollar industry, but billion, you know, multi, multi, multi billion dollar companies that have the best minds in the world working on this tech to go out there and capture your attention, keep you like, you know, because we're in an era now where nobody's ever bored. Yeah, right. Like you're in the grocery line, grocery store line. And maybe it's a five minute line, but then you can't even sit there for five minutes with your own thoughts. You got to go. I don't know what the hell happened here with StreamYard, but now we're back. Um, so anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Keep crushing it. Keep kicking ass. And I will see you next time. Peace.